Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. In this episode, we're going to take a look at anim notifications or anim notifies and how you can make use of them. So the use cases vary a lot. Anything from like having your character make sounds when their feet touch the ground to something like uh, particle effects that's generated or damage detection and uh, damage application to all kinds of more advanced things like things like this. So anime notifies, that's what we will be taking a look at. Welcome back. In this episode, we are going to be looking at how you can leverage anime notifications when it comes to paper ZD. Uh, Let's get started with just opening up either our animation source or one of the anime sequences. So here we have the animation source. Let's click on one of the animation sources, uh, uh, animation sequences, sorry. So for example, we created the jump upward one. So here we have, if we pause this, the timeline that's going on, which we can move our scrubber along to see what the sprites look like during this animation. And an Anim notify is essentially a way to create an event upon which something will execute when that event happens. Uh, to the left here we can see notifies being mentioned here and we can see a one. This is our track. We can add more tracks if we want to by clicking track and just inserting. Now you can see we have a second track here. We can remove this again because we won't be needing it for now. So if you want to add an anim notify, all you need to do is be on the track and right click. Then you'll get this contextual menu. The first anim notify that we will be adding is a play particle effect. The particle effect allows us to play a particle effect at a certain point in time in the animation. So in this case, it will play during this sprite of this animation, which is our jumping upwards. If you click on the anim notify, you get under here in the details, the ability to configure this particle effect a little bit. This particle effect or particle effect anim notify only allows you to make use of cascade. If you want to make use of Niagara system particle effects in your animations, you'll have to use one of the techniques that we will be showing a little bit later. But for now, let's look at what you can do here with cascade. So if we open up this menu, you can see that we have some particle effects which are provided in the engine. We'll click the fire, we'll click the the magnifying glass so we can see it where it is in the folder hierarchy. We'll make sure to copy this one by dragging it to one of our folders and saying copy here. Then we go in there and we mark it and we go back to our animation and we make sure to use the arrow when we have it marked so that it will overwrite the first one that we selected over here now. So now we have selected the particle effect that we have copied over here. Now we want to make use of this one, but this one is a little bit big. If we put it into the world, you can see it's very large compared to our character. So we'll be making it a little bit smaller just so it will make a little bit more sense. Uh, we open it up. So we click on required and we scroll down a bit. Here you see emitter loops. It's at zero, which means this is a repeating or looping particle system. You can't use a looping or uh, repeating particle system when it comes to this type of anim notify. You will have to use one of the later ones that I will be showing. Uh, so we will be putting this to one, meaning that it will bar only run once. Uh, we will also change the meter duration. We will change it to six. So we have a little bit of a fire running here. We will remove the constant acceleration by pressing delete. We will remove the initial velocity by pressing delete. And then we can change the initial size to be something smaller. So we'll go from 150 to 15, so a tenth, and we'll reduce the, the minimum value here from 100 to 10 as well, so it's a tenth. We can unsave and close this out. Moving this particle system into the world, now we can see that it's a much nicer size compared to our character here. So this will work fine, I think. So what we have done here now is that our jump upwards animation we'll be playing this particle system when we're jumping on the first frame. So if we were to do that now, you can see here we jump and you can see that it's 
creates a particle system that follows our character. If we wanted to, we could also go into the particle system and remove attached. That means it will only be playing or it will be spawning where it was created. It won't follow the character along. This is good for something if you wanted to have maybe a character that jumps off something. You wanted some dust particles from the jump. So now if we jump, you can see that it will be staying, but we get two different particle systems playing here, but they're staying put. So there's one and there's a second one. The reason why we're getting two is because this is a looping animation that we have that is going to be lasting as long as our character is moving upwards, which means that this specific loop actually happened twice. So this part uh, happened twice. So this might be what you're after, or it might not be. Uh, if you wanted to have something just by the, the jumping part, we have a, a jump start animation here. So we can remove this, go to the jump start instead. And we can put this particle effect here instead. So add particle effect, click on it, not attached. And then we need to find which one is ours here. So by hovering over them, you can see that this one is in the path game papers of D. So this is the one that I altered. So I'll click this one. We save. And if we jump now, you can see that we get a particle effect just where we jumped and nowhere else. Similarly, like you add particle system, you can also add a sound and it works exactly the same. You just click the sound and make sure to choose a sound that you want to play. And here again, you want to have a sound that is not looping because these two systems or these two types of notifies uh, want to have non-repeating assets being used. Similar to these, if we remove these, is something, if you go to add notify here, you can add a new notify. Now a new notify is a notify that you can first of all give a name. So let's give this our uh, LBG tests notify. So this notify here, uh, exists within this animation source. So we have now created an animation notify which we can hook up some game logic to. Uh, this lives within the whole animation source so we could go to a completely different one and we can right click on an event uh, track or notify track and go to add the notify and then go to source notify and you can see that our new uh, notification appears here. So any animation sequence that we have in the same animation source can make use of notifiers that are created in this manner. How these work are, if we go back to this one, is you can see that we can click on it just like the other ones and we get some options here, but there isn't a whole lot available right here. The reason for this is that the event that is being caused by this existing is going to be handled by the animation blueprint that belongs or it makes use of this animation source. So in our case, we have this animation blueprint over here. Now that we added the event, you can see that we have a function here we didn't have before. So whenever you create an anim notify in this way, you get a receive notify here and right clicking on this and clicking on opening graph, you get into the function where this will be handled. So inside of this uh, function now, we can put whatever game logic we wanted to have. To demonstrate that this works, we can just do a print string and we can say LBG uh, notify. We'll make it something orange, like so. And then we'll play and now in the top left, it should be appearing whenever we reach it. So I'll jump and you can see that we get the notify in the top left there. Let's jump again to see it again. So <clears throat> that works. And the benefit of this being that you have this in blueprints, which means that you can do any type of blueprint code you want to do. So if you wanted to have Niagara system particle effects, for example, here you could essentially put that if you wanted to. Now, this might not always be what you want. You might have a situation where you maybe have two different animation sources uh, for two different characters or something like that. 
and you still want to have some common code that reacts in similar ways between them, then this wouldn't work because your animation, um, your animation notify that you created like this only lives within this animation source. There are ways to make more modular and reusable notifications as well. If we go and right click and go and create a blueprint class, type in ZD and notify, you can see that we have a paper ZD anim notify over here. If we choose this one and we call it uh, an underscore ZD notify. Let's have a lowercase o there. This here is now a notify that we can make use of in different animation sources. If we open up our animation source again, we can see if we right click on our track that we now have a new animation notify that we can choose here. Choosing this one, we can see we don't have a whole lot when it comes to the, the details here because this logic is actually contained within the class that we have over here. But this is now available to any animation source. If we were to create a new animation source, uh, this one, and we'll just keep the default name and open it up. We don't really need to have much in here. We can add a new animation sequence, even though it's empty. Uh, on the track here, we can now say and notify and can see that our uh, class appears here, our new notify class. But we do not find the other one that we created in uh, the other animation source, this one, the test notify, because this one only is possible to make use of inside of this source. But an, an, uh, another notify created as a blueprint class, you can make use of in multiple different animation sources. So let's remove this again. Uh, we don't need this animation source. It's just for demonstration purposes, like so. So how do these notified work then? Well, how these work are like the following. You have an event graph here if you wanted to make use of it, but the most important parts come over here where you can see functions and overridable. Clicking on the override button here, you can see that we have a display name and a receive notify. The on receive notify, if we click on that one, this one is the event that will fire whenever the notification is detected on the track. So we can print out from this one so you can see what that looks like. So we can say that this is our BP notify and we'll make it uh, really blue, maybe even bluer like so. And then we play and then we jump. You can see we get the notify that exists in the animation source only and we can see the blueprint notify over there. So this is where you would be putting the code. Sorry, this is sorry. This is where you would be putting the code and that you wanted to make use of between different animation sources if you wanted to. Now, this is not the only state available to us either. We have a last one here as well. If we right click and go to blueprint class and type in ZD and notify again, we also have something that's called an anim notify state. Checking this one, you can call it BP ZD notify state. Opening this one up, you can see it's similar to the other class we had, but we have four functions here now. We have a notify begin, we have a notify end, and we have a notify tick. So we have three different events that are available to us in the state one. The reason for that is best described by going to our animation source. And let's, so this one only consists of one single frame of sprite. So this one isn't that useful. But if we went to, for example, our jump upwards and we right click here under add notify, we don't see it over here. We don't see it under source notifies, but we have an add notify state here where we can find this new class that we created. This one is different because the other ones, if we go back to the jump start again, you can see this little diamond sort of thing on the left hand side of the names. That is when the event will actually execute and be detected. When we go to this jump upward here, you can see we have a diamond both on the left and on the right. That's because we can determine a 
time frame for this state to exist. And we can extend this if we wanted to, or shorten it as we need it. So what's happening here is that when the first diamond is encountered, then our notify begin is being launched. When we get to the last diamond here, over here in the end, then we will have the notify end event being launched. In between these two, we will have the notify tick being launched each frame that will be played between the start and the end. Let's visualize this. So we go to the class and we'll have a print and string like so. We just copy these like so. And what we will be doing here is actually let's not copy them yet. Let's do this. Let's make a different color. Let's say purple. And let's say we want to have these last four seconds so we have the time to read. And then we can copy them now that we have the different colors. And what we'll do now is we'll say on the first one, we'll say state begin. The second one will say state end. And in the third one, we will say state tick. There we go. And we added it to our jump upwards. So this will happen in the upwards part, which we uh, by looking at the uh, the particle effect in the beginning, no, we will, it will at least happen twice. So if we start playing, we can see now if we jump up, we get a state begin, lots of ticks, state, state end, let's do that again. And then a state begin and state ticks, and we don't get a state end for the last one because it doesn't reach... Uh, let's see here, over here we probably don't reach this frame when it comes to the second loop. Let's try that again to make sure. Yeah, it seems we don't get an end. So well, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. So that's how this works. So these are usually good for when you want to have something like uh, work during a certain period of time and then end while the more uh, these types of uh, events are usually for something that you just need to have a, a reaction to something happening while the, the, the states essentially is for something for a duration of time you want to have something work. So there you have it. That is essentially how you can make use of and what different types of states you have. So let's recap this a little bit quickly. If we right click on a track, we can add notifies. We have the particle effects, which is default. We have the sounds we can add. We can also create our own notifies as well, which will be executing code. These notifies are class independent. So you can have the same type of code run in different types of animation sources. If you add a new notify over here, it will appear on the source notifies instead, which will allow you to reuse it within the same animation source on the different animation sequences. In addition to having an animation notify, you can also create animation notify states. They also can work between different animation sources if you want. And the differences between a notify and a notify state is that a notify is sort of like a pulse or a signal that happens when the first diamond is reached because it doesn't have a second diamond and a state has a start diamond and an end diamond and can execute code both on the event on the start, the end or in between on the tick. I hope that this was useful to you. That's all for now. Keep on learning. Take care. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.